Welcome back to Sports Center. It's been more than three months since Katie Meyer, a promising goalkeeper for the Stanford University women's soccer team, died by suicide. Meyer was a team captain who had aspirations to attend law school at Stanford. Her parents are now advocating for a proposed policy they'd like to see all schools adopt. Katie's save, named after their daughter, would add an additional level of support for students who are dealing with life events that could impact their mental health. Here's Outside the Lines and John Barr with more. Matt, on the night of February 28th, Katie Meyer FaceTimed with her parents and made plans for spring break with friends in Mexico. She did all of that, her parents say, just hours before taking her own life inside her dorm room. Here's more now on Katie Meyer's life and the impact she had both on and off the field. It's hard not to feel your heart beating through your chest no matter where you are watching this. Katie Meyer burst onto the national sports scene in perhaps the most pressure-filled way possible. Otto, can't get it, saved by Meyer! It was her performance in goal during the 2019 College Cup that first brought her notoriety. Second save of the shootout for Meyer! Moments after Meyer's final save of the shootout, this happened. She's got it! Stanford has won their second national championship in the last three years, and the Cardinal are the queens of college soccer once again. Meyer went on to become the team captain for Stanford in her final two seasons. She'd played soccer since the age of five. Growing up in Southern California with her two sisters, Samantha and Sienna, and her parents, Steve and Gina. While at Stanford, Meyer studied international relations, history, and Italian. She started a podcast and a YouTube broadcast. Welcome to episode one of Be the Mentality. I am your host, Catherine Diane Meyer known by most as Katie Meyer, and I am a Stanford women's soccer player. Katie also became an advocate for those dealing with mental health issues. Some struggles are harder to see than others. Your mental health is incredibly important, and it's okay to go through challenges. In early March, the soccer community was stunned when it was reported that Meyer had died by suicide inside her dorm room the night of February 28th. She was awaiting acceptance to law school and was months from graduation. Katie Meyer was 22 years old. Katie Meyer's parents have channeled their grief into a new initiative launched just this week, which they've called Katie's Save. It's a policy they hope schools will put in place to help students facing challenges that could impact their mental health. You can read about it on the website katiesave.org. I recently sat down with Steve and Gina Meyer to talk about it. Take a listen. The purpose of this is that extra layer of support and guidance that we feel that uh, parents, guardian, designated advocate, these students need just extra support in certain situations. Um, you know, when you are a parent and your child goes off to college at, at about 18 years old, if they are 18, you know, you are in the dark when they go away as far as, uh, you know, mentally, physically, disciplinary, grades, academic, unless they tell you, you don't get any of this information. Katie say what it's going to do when your kid signs up for school, when they register for school, we're hoping it's part of it's a yes or no checkbox that will say, I give my designated advocate permission to receive information regarding example dis disciplinary action or academic probation. But it is a choice, it is optional. They will check yes or no. And then that designated advocate, it could be parent, guardian, an aunt, an uncle, a go godparent, anyone that they trust would get a, e a email blast um, explaining that that student has been um, involved in a situation regarding some, an element of Katie's save. What types of responses have you gotten from the NCAA and others as you've approached them about this idea? It's great, great positive feedback, yeah. 
Excellent. It sounds like they are willing to collaborate with us. Uh, let's see what happens. We hope that becomes a reality. What is your hope about schools and whether they will embrace this? If it becomes part of NCAA's best practices, it would at least be in there for the athletes. We want all students to be supported. So it's not just the athletes, but this is student-wide, their entire university. So, so yeah, we really need to get this out there. You know, these kids, they don't... They, they don't necessarily always want to, you know, tell their parents everything. And sometimes they don't even want to tell their friends. They don't want to be a burden. They don't, maybe they're embarrassed about something or they feel ashamed about something. Um, and but, we understand that. We were young once too. Yeah. Right? We, we get that. And so that's why it's designed this way, to, to protect them uh, in a way that, again, from their point of view, doesn't feel like someone's watching over my every single move. You know, it's just in those moments that they're not all they're alone. They're not all alone. They're, they're not carrying the burden and, alone. And to carry back to the, your initial question there, I would hope schools would want to do this. Mm -hmm. The system as it is, is not working the way it should. Mm -hmm. Gina, I know you and Steve have spoken openly about a disciplinary proceeding that Katie was involved in at Stanford uh, she'd apparently known about it for some weeks, but on the night of her suicide, she received an email relating to that disciplinary proceeding. What more has the school told you about that, and what more would you like to hear from the school relating to that? Yeah, John, the school hasn't told us anything. Um, we, we are disappointed um, with the exchange of information uh, with Stanford, we have come to an impasse, and um, you know we wish they were were providing more information. Well, well, Steve and Gina, it occurs to me that you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to throw yourselves into this into this initiative. Uh, how has it helped you uh, deal with your grief? I mean, I think it's just we don't want to see another family go through this. Um, we don't want to see another student lost be because of this, because of the system, because they think they're alone, because they think they don't have that extra support or guidance that they need. And, you know, I'm just going to say it, John, when it hits the fan and, and things get tough, um, you know, you can spiral very quickly thinking, you know, I'm a failure. It's over. Uh, my identity is gone. And, um, you know, it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart if that is how Katie was feeling that night. You know, I'm, we're just broken, and we need to do something. We can't sit back, you know, and not do anything. Yeah, if we do nothing, then nothing's going to change, and we feel we owe it to our daughter, and we owe it to all these future students coming through. We must, must do something. We reached out to Stanford to learn more about the disciplinary proceeding Katie Meyer was involved in and had learned more about on the night of her suicide. Citing privacy concerns, the school declined to comment, but a spokesperson says school officials did offer to meet with the Myers to go over Katie's file. The Myers have retained an attorney who told ESPN earlier this week that the school has since rescinded its offer to discuss Katie's case with the Myers. And Matt, with that, we're going to send it back to SportsCenter.